Hello everybody, let me welcome you all to this new series of lectures uh, titled Introduction to R Radars. Uh, so, uh, I will be following this book Introduction to Radar Systems by uh, Skolnik uh, and uh, initially I have planned for five lectures so as the course moves on I might add a few more. So, in today's lecture I would be uh, covering the radar equation. I will follow it up with uh, CW and uh, frequency modulated radars in the next lecture following it up with the MTI and pulse Doppler radar, uh, tracking radar uh, and the final lecture would be on electronic counter counter uh, measures. Now uh, what is radar? Radar stands for uh, radio detection and uh, ranging. So R A D A R. Okay. So essentially we need to have an antenna uh, which would uh, tra which has to be directional that means it, it has to uh, uh, rotate right. So, uh, so at, at, a, at any given uh, point of time it would be uh, facing only uh, one direction. Okay, so I have an antenna. Uh, so uh, it will transmit an uh, EM pulse, okay, electromagnetic pulse. So the pulse would uh, uh, propagate in the air at a speed of velocity of light. Uh, it would hit a target, and then the uh, target should be a uh, metallic object, uh, so that the EM wave gets reflected from there. So and now the reflected wave uh, is received by back by the antenna. So obviously uh, here there should be some uh, duplexer. Uh, wherein uh, uh, you have a transmitter uh, which will enable uh, through the duplexer you ha you can transmit the uh, EM pulse and then uh, again you can receive the signal and the received signal can be sent to the uh, receiver section for further uh, processing. Now uh, if you are able to calculate the time taken uh, you know, from the time I have transmitted the pulse for the pulse to go uh, hit the target and come back. So, if I know the time taken for the pulse to uh, no, travel to the target and come back then and, and since the velocity the, of the pulse is known as okay, that the electromagnetic pulse we all know it uh, moves with a velocity of uh, velocity of light. Okay. Uh, so, and hence uh, so we can compute the uh, if the time is known velocity is known then we can compute the uh, distance. Okay. So, uh, the radar is used uh, not only uh, for uh, calculating the range of the target okay a range is nothing but this distance uh, also the angles okay uh, so there are two angles one is known as uh, azimuth and other one is known as the elevation okay uh, azimuth is nothing but uh, it will give me uh, the <coughs> uh, 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 geographical direction that is whether the aircraft is in a ca na, uh, coming to the uh, towards the target from the north or south or northwest whatever so if you see this and uh, you have the radar antennas and which are uh, rotating at an uh, fixed rpm so uh, whenever i am transmitting a pulse at, at a given direction and if i am going to uh, if i am uh, receiving a pulse in that direction then i can say okay uh, the aircraft is, is coming from that particular direction so accordingly we have a uh, scope so as the radar moves okay you you have uh, this uh, radar scope uh, you have the uh, antenna direction also uh, you see it is rotating and also whenever uh, there are uh, some reflections okay uh, they glow here so you can see here uh, here somewhere close to north there are some uh, blips which are shown on the scope uh, similarly uh, towards the south also you can see there are uh, certain blips that means there there are some reflections from these directions uh, which will uh, which gives us the uh, idea of the <coughs> target and angle okay so that is known as and uh, elevation is nothing but now now this this can uh, this is uh, elevation is with respect to that okay i'll uh, show, explain that in the next slide uh, so target size uh, coming to the uh, target size uh, now if you see uh, based on the uh, strength of the uh, signal which is received at the antenna uh, i can make an estimate of the size of the target right so if it is a very big aircraft so obviously a large uh, the uh, received pulse eco eco pulse which is known as the eco pulse uh, will have a uh, greater amplitude right and greater power okay whichever way you call it so now uh, whereas if it's a small target so i will uh, the echo pulse magnitude will be very very uh, small so with that i can make a fair estimate about the what is the uh, size of the target uh, and we can also estimate the uh, speed okay so uh, we will discuss this in detail in the subsequent lectures but just to give you a uh, rough idea uh, so if, if the target is moving uh, this uh, the our incident wave gets modulated by the veloc because of the velocity of the aircraft and because of the uh, uh, shift in the uh, received frequency we can estimate the 
speed of the target. So that de detailed derivation we will do uh, subsequently, right? So uh, coming to uh, these, uh, uh, these these four uh, na, uh, ta, na, definitions, a range is the actual distance between the antenna and the target. Okay, it it is not the uh, di distance along the uh, <coughs> surface of the earth. Okay, so it it is nothing to do uh, with the uh, with the uh, actual na, uh, ground distance. Okay, when when we talk about target range, it is the uh, uh, if you draw a, a straight line between the target and the antenna. So whatever is the uh, distance, obviously the uh, pulse has to uh, travel. Uh, 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 if R is the range, the total uh, distance the pulse uh, travels uh, is uh, two R because the pulse goes to the target and comes back. Okay, uh, so that uh, the, whereas R is known as the range. Okay, so this is the range between the target and the uh, antenna. Uh, angle, like I said, there could be two. One is uh, azimuth. Azimuth is nothing but the angle with respect to the geographical north. Okay. Uh, elevation is uh, elevation is this angle right uh, with respect to an uh, horizontal line and uh, uh, what is the elevation okay so this 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 is the elevation of the target okay so uh, that also because of the radar movement only uh, okay, this can be ca computed okay so the uh, the uh, <coughs> antenna can uh, uh, has to uh, be, we should be able to move the antenna in the uh, 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 in this axis Okay, uh, in the elevation axis, so that uh, when once we know the reflection is from a particular uh, angle, uh, based on that we can uh, compute the uh, 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 total uh, uh, elevation of the target. Okay, that is known as the elevation. Okay, so this angle with respect to the uh, horizontal uh, uh, plane, okay, where the uh, antenna is situ situated. Okay, from here, right. So that becomes the uh, uh, that is known as the elevation and target size and uh, target sp uh, speed, which we uh, discussed in the earlier uh, slide, right? Now there could be uh, two uh, types of radars. Uh, one is known as an, a monostatic, the other is known as the bistatic radars. Okay. So uh, in the uh, monostatic radars, you just have uh, one radar uh, which which transmits as well as uh, receives. Okay. So this is uh, so uh, you transmit a pulse, it goes and hits the target, and you have a reflection which will be again be uh, captured. Okay. So this is known as uh, this. <coughs> is known as monostatic and you could also have bistatic you know, uh, radars uh, where the target is illuminated by one transmitter it goes and uh, hits and the reflected pulse is uh, captured by another uh, receiver okay uh, so uh, in this is, these are known as you know, uh, bistatic uh, radars okay so obviously bistatic radars you know, uh, cannot you know, detect targets you know, which uh, don't have you know, uh, enough elevation angles okay so uh, suppose uh, here if you see here uh, the direct uh, energy from the uh, transmitter uh, uh, can uh, come into the receiver okay uh, because uh, the elevation is very low so it could cause a problem and uh, errors in computation right whereas uh, uh, for high flying objects you know, this kind of uh, uh, system can work so uh, these are about the two types of radars which we have now uh, how is the range computed uh, for a bistatic uh, it is the uh, total uh, 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 time taken by the uh, 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 time taken uh, for the pulse to travel will be uh, RT plus RR. Okay, uh, uh, RT is uh, this distance and RR is this distance. Okay, so uh, now uh, you then uh, once that time is known, you can uh, 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 multiply it with the velocity of the light uh, to get the uh, 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 total uh, RT plus RR. Right. So uh, now uh, in this case, uh, uh, these both have to be synchronized. Right. The, these. So the receiver uh, needs to know at what exact time the transmitter has uh, transmitted the pulse. Okay, so that information should be uh, available for the uh, receiver, right? In monostatic uh, radars, you are uh, transmitting the uh, same, uh, the transmitting and the receiving antennas are are one and the same, right? And uh, hence the total distance uh, traversed by the uh, pulse is going to be a two r. So you have an a uh, two r and and if t r is the time taken a uh, time taken, an uh, uh, is the time between the transmitted pulse and the received pulse as shown in the diagram below. If you see here, you are transmitting the pulse here and you are receiving the pulse here. So that is a uh, t r. So this can be computed easily, right? Because you are uh, transmitting and receiving from the same station. So with that you can compute the range. Okay. Now uh, here c is the uh, velocity of light in uh, free space which is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 uh, meter per uh, second, right? 
So uh, now uh, uh, let's uh, just uh, recall uh, how does an e EM wave looks like. So this is an uh, RF signal. Uh, so if you uh, no, this this wave gets uh, repeated at a time period uh, t because it is uh, sinusoidal in nature, periodic in nature, and uh, the total distance between uh, uh, two points which are uh, equal in phase and magnitude are is known as lambda. So this is known as the wavelength, right? Uh, and the frequency and the wavelength are uh, uh, e are related with with this equation, right? Frequency is equal to speed of light. Uh, divided by a wavelength. So, for different uh, frequencies, so uh, as the frequency increases, the wavelength uh, decreases. Okay. So, now if you see the radars, they are uh, operating, we have radars operating right from uh, HF to millimeter uh, range, right. So, the frequency is increasing here. So, these are known as uh, low frequency radars and these are very high frequency radars, right. So, this is the uh, total uh, range. Most of the radars these days operate from 220 megahertz to 35 uh, gigahertz okay uh, common uh, modern day radars operate in these frequencies at low frequencies you have got an, a large distance so if you see here very long range very long range so but the thing is uh, you you could have uh, uh, a lot of noise and multiple reflections uh, at, at these frequencies okay which can cause errors so as we learn more about the radars we'll uh, understand those issues so uh, this is just to give an, a brief idea about the radar operating frequencies uh, but uh, from L band to no, uh, Q band and K band, uh, this is where most of modern day uh, radars operate. So, uh, in these frequencies, they do have an, uh, a very high uh, resolution. Okay, the range is uh, limited to uh, line of sight here. So, so coming from HF to uh, no, uh, beyond UHF, the range decreases. Now it is okay. But then uh, you have less of noise uh, and then your uh, resolution increases. Okay, so these are the uh, range of frequencies which are uh, used in modern day uh, radars. Now, uh, before we get on with the derivation of the uh, radar equation, so one important uh, para, uh, figure of merit of antenna is known as antenna directivity. So, we need to understand what is this because uh, this is uh, one of the parameters which is uh, used in the radar range equation. So, let me explain you briefly what an antenna directivity is. Okay. Uh, so, if you see here, uh, suppose I have an uh, antenna uh, which is omnidirectional, that is I have an antenna uh, in which I uh, feed some power, okay, say P t. Uh, if that power is going to be uh, 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 radiated uh, 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 symmetrically uh, all throughout, okay, that means it is uh, the radiation intensity will be the same in all the directions, then it is known as an uh, uh, isotropic uh, antenna, okay. Uh, and if you take the uh, radiation pattern, this is a two-dimensional figure. Otherwise, you can uh, assume that uh, no, the antenna is in between an, an a sphere and the radiation intensity will be the same all over the surface of the sphere, right? So, if, if P t is the, uh, uh, if, if P t is the no, power which is uh, transmitted by an uh, isotropic antenna, and uh, you have an uh, sphere where your antenna is kept exactly in the so the radiation uh, density at any given uh, no, uh, distance r okay the power density will be 4 divided by 4 pi r square right so uh, 4 pi r square is is the total uh, distance so as you obviously as you keep on uh, moving as you keep increasing r uh, what happens is the uh, top uh, no, uh, power density uh, reduces obviously uh, no, with the r square right so so that would be there but uh, otherwise at any given distance r so on a sphere uh, anywhere you take the power density it will be equal so that is what it is known as isotropic uh, no, uh, antenna okay okay uh, whereas that is not desirable uh, for an uh, radar right uh, because radar i have to capture you know, which direction the aircraft is so when i am uh, transmitting in uh, this particular antenna if, you know, so if if my antenna is facing say in this east i want the entire energy to be transmitted only in this direction so that i have reflections coming only from this this east direction only then i can say okay there is a target available in the east right so it is very very important that in in radars we are using a highly directional antennas so generally when you design a directional antenna you will have a main low where a majority of the uh, so this antenna this particular in this particular diagram this antenna is facing towards the east the directional antenna 
and hence most of the energy is being transmitted towards the east but there will be some uh, leakage okay so this is known as the back lobe and these are known as the side lobes so this uh, you might have learnt in your uh, antenna uh, theory okay now uh, what is uh, antenna directivity it is the ratio of the radiation intensity in a given direction okay given direction means the desired direction uh, from the antenna to the radiation intensity uh, averaged all over the directions uh, that means suppose i am if this antenna i have a directional antenna which is uh, uh, no, uh, facing towards the east okay now uh, i have uh, s okay uh, that is the radiation uh, intensity in the uh, desired direction okay i take that ratio uh, that s uh, divided by you know, the uh, total an energy which is transmitted divided by 4 pi r square okay that is 4 pi r square is assuming if if the antenna would have been an isotropic then it would have uh, radiated in equal so i will get a radiation pattern this dotted line right so obviously uh, since it is dire uh, this is since i have a directional antenna now the energy density will be much higher so it is s s now uh, had it been an isotropic i would have got an uh, si okay so uh, si will be nothing but uh, this this right uh, no, uh, si will be total transmitted divided by 4 pi uh, r square where uh, this is uh, no, uh, uh, r right where <coughs> so uh, no no this would be uh, r in that in that particular case right so but whereas for a directional antenna uh, i will have right uh, for a directional antenna i will have uh, more energy being transmitted in the a uh, given uh, direction right so so uh, no, uh, to uh, to sum it up if i have a directional antenna if i don't have a directional antenna at a given distance r okay uh, this will be uh, s will be an uh, pt total power divided by uh, 4 pi uh, r square right now if i have an directional antenna right then i will have more power there in the desired direction so for that i can multiply it with something known as you know, g which is known as antenna directivity right so i i i so uh, merely you know, uh, 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 dividing the total power by 4 pi r square 4 pi r square is nothing but the area of the you know, uh, of a sphere at a distance r right so i will get only pt divided by 4 pi r square power if it is an isotropic antenna but if i am using an directional antenna i will get more power uh, and and that is known as the gain of the antenna and which 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 is represented by which i can represent it by a g okay so with that basics let us uh, try and uh, derive the radar uh, range equation now uh, suppose the power uh, radiated by a radar is a uh, pt obviously the uh, unit for the uh, power will be a uh, watts and then the power density uh, at a distance d so if the target if it is at a distance in a, uh, d uh, su suppose uh, no it should be r right so let me uh, amend that at a distance r yeah rest is all uh, okay so So, uh, the power density at a distance r, if the antenna is isotropic, it will be pt divided by 4 pi r square, okay, because the power is being uniformly uh, distributed in all directions. So, at a distance r, if I draw a, a sphere, the total area will be 4 pi r square, and now this power density will be watts per meter square, okay, that is per unit area, that, that way the power. Now, uh, power density, uh, uh, if the antenna is uh, 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 isotropic okay uh, i think these are the same thing okay uh, let me again uh, do a correction out here if the antenna is uh, directional then what happens if it is an uh, uh, directional then i can uh, uh, multiply it i'll get more power right so So, I get uh, more power here because now antenna is directional. So, I, I insert a term G, okay, where G is the directive gain of the radar antenna. So, now this is the total power uh, which is available, okay. Uh, I am radiating total power Pt 
and the power which is uh, power density available at the target will be pt divided by 4 pi uh, r square now if you see uh, the target okay depending on the kind of aircraft okay uh, so the surface area uh, available for the em waves to get reflected will be different for a large transport aircraft it will be very very large and and, and for a for small uh, fighter aircraft or for a small uh, helicopter the area will be much lesser okay so uh, so uh, so the amount of energy which gets reflected depends on the uh, no, surface area presented by the target okay with so and hence uh, based on the received signal we can estimate what kind of aircraft it is okay so modern day uh, aircrafts what they have is they have a uh, stealth uh, structure okay uh, so what it does so uh, as far as the aircraft is concerned if you want to if you don't want to get detected by an uh, radar what you need to do is you have to uh, no, uh, have a surface in such a manner that they don't reflect waves uh, back in the incident angle suppose you know, uh, if i uh, have uh, some rays which is you know, uh, coming here to this surface so all the surface if you see the way it is incident it will not be reflected back to the radar okay it will get reflected somewhere else right and hence it becomes difficult for the radar to uh, detect this so uh, basically stealth aircraft you know, they uh, rely on the uh, no, uh, angles you know, which are created by this you know, uh, surface design so that the uh, incident wave is not reflected back in the same direction okay that is how they uh, avoid getting detected by radar and also uh, you have you know, these surfaces coated by uh, anti radiation you know, uh, paints okay so materials okay so they would uh, those that material uh, will have you know, a mini a minimum radar signature okay that means they will not uh, reflect they will absorb the uh, em radiations which is there so that that's about uh, stealth okay now uh, coming back to our radar uh, range equation so uh, the total energy which uh, gets now uh, reflected okay uh, because this is uh, no uh, this is the total energy uh, available uh, no, uh, uh, up to g is the total energy uh, no, uh, available per uh, no, area now if you multiply it with sigma sigma is the radar cross section area that is offered by the uh, uh, target by these targets then i get the total power which gets uh, reflected back okay so i have the sigma again coming here this is ptg divided by 4 pi r square is the energy per unit area uh, received at the target okay now i multiply it with the target area okay so the target area is known as radar cross sectional area now so that, that becomes you know, this is the total energy which is getting uh, reflected now if you see here this target uh, the energy which is get being reflected by the target okay uh, you can consider that to be again an omnidirectional antenna right so whatever is energy it gets you know, scattered in all directions in, in in throughout okay it is not it is not going to be you know, you know, reflected back towards the antenna because this that that surface doesn't uh, have an uh, like you know omni uh, and, and, and directivity right it is just an a plain surface where the uh, em waves gets uh, no, uh, get, uh, hits and then it gets you know, sc reflected in all directions so now if you consider that as an antenna uh, with an you know, omnidirectional antenna where it is going to isotropic antenna where it is going to transmit in all directions then the uh, energy which will be uh, received back at the radar antenna again you have 1 by 4 pi r square okay because if i again draw a big sphere right uh, with with this as center and making a big sphere now this is a distance r so total energy uh, uh, no, uh, power density received power density will be divided by 4 pi r square uh, again this unit will become uh, watt per meter square okay so this is the uh, energy which is uh, received by the at the radar antenna of the uh, eco energy energy density okay so you have pt you have g gain of the antenna uh, sigma is the cross sectional uh, area and uh, 4 pi r square uh, no, uh, come one one comes because of the forward path and one one 4 pi r square comes because of the uh, reverse path okay so i have this equation uh, now if you see here if this is the antenna the physical uh, dimension uh, may be a uh, d but right so you have something known as effective receiving uh, area so uh, that is an electrical area of the antenna right so that could be a slightly lesser than the physical uh, uh, dimension okay so uh, ae is the uh, electrical uh, antenna efficiency right 
uh, where E is the an uh, antenna efficiency and A is the uh, electrical area of the effective receiving area or uh, you know, electrical effective receiving area of the antenna. Okay. So, uh, this is what in the previous slide, uh, this is what this is energy density, right? energy per unit area. So, now I need to uh, multiply it with the area of the antenna. So, I take an, an, an parameter A e also where A is known as the effect uh, antenna effective uh, na, uh, area. Okay. Uh, <coughs> So, uh, antenna effective, it should be uh, area also. Okay, So, now you multiply it with that A e also. So, uh, A e, A e, since it is an area, it will be a meter square. So, the power received at the antenna again uh, becomes W. So, this is the total uh, power which will be uh, received at the uh, antenna end. Right? Now, this received power uh, has to be okay uh, for the max range. Right? For the max range, R max, it has to be the minimum detectable signal. Okay, what is minimum detectable? The minimum power uh, that can be uh, detected you know, at the uh, receiver, right? So if I uh, that is known as S min. So if I put S min here and then uh, for that S min, this becomes R max. So it could be right. Uh, it could be some few microwatts, okay, of power which I can detect, right? So I put that max. So I get this radar you know, max range equation, right? Here, if you see here. Now in the, from this equation. Now, we can uh, clearly see uh, what are the things which we can do uh, to optimize our max range. Okay? First, to increase the power. Right? Okay, if you increase the power, it is uh, clear that we can increase our range. Right? Increase the uh, gain of the antenna. That means, uh, you should be able to transmit more power in the desired direction. So, your antenna has to be uh, highly directive. Okay? Uh, this is sigma and now this is the radar cross section of the target okay so this is not controllable by us right so it depends on the target so sigma is not something which we can design it's not in our hand now ae that is the uh, antenna area okay this is again a design parameter so we should be able to uh, have an uh, greater antenna uh, area so that is again an uh, issue the moment we go for uh, low frequencies although the range increases but the antenna size increases, right? So at high frequency, so at if you are operating at low frequency, your antenna size becomes very very large. Okay, uh, so at high frequencies, you can have a uh, small antenna, smaller antenna, and you can uh, optimize the uh, na, AE. Okay, so that is it. S min. Now S min, uh, obviously from this equation, it appears that we should keep uh, S min as low as possible. Okay, so S min is the minimum detectable power. Now, there is an uh, issue in uh, keeping S min uh, as minimum. So, suppose, right, for any uh, signal, you, right, uh, so uh, for any uh, receiver of, uh, and which is connected with an antenna, you will find always there is some noise which is being uh, picked up, right. So, you should uh, set a threshold voltage, okay, uh, so that you know, all these uh, noise do not uh, figure false alarm, right. So, only the actual reflection from the target uh, should uh, give me a blip in the uh, uh, console. Right? Now, now suppose now if you set a low uh, threshold uh, vol uh, uh, voltage, okay, S minimum, then you will have so many blips coming here. Okay? Unwanted reflections from ground noise okay, uh, to nearby, all those noise will get keep getting uh, picked up here. So, I do not want uh, and then uh, it will be very, very uh, difficult for the radar operator to distinguish between an actual target and an all spurious warnings. Okay? And for that reason, I need to uh, uh, set an, uh, uh, a threshold voltage. So, this is known as a threshold voltage, so that all the noise do not uh, trigger a false alarm and, and only signals which are uh, received above the threshold voltage, okay, that will be, uh, be constituted as an uh, actual reflection from a uh, target and, and then you will get a blip uh, for this. Okay? So, that is there. So, now if you want to uh, modify this radar range equation to include the noise, so let us just try and understand what a noise figure is. So, uh, suppose I have an amplifier, okay. So, this is an, a receiver where there will be an <coughs> amplification of the received signal. So, I have noise signal coming in, I have the uh, actual signal uh, coming in, right. So, uh, so the noise signal which is uh, coming in is actually uh, uh, which is available in the ambient atmosphere is given by this equation K T B N, right? B N is the 
a bandwidth of this amplifier, right? Uh, T is the absolute temperature in Kelvin, and, and K is the Boltzmann constant. Now, uh, why I uh, put B n out here is there might be noise in the entire frequency uh, spectrum, right? I am not interested in that. I am only interested in the noise which is, is going to pass through this my particular uh, receiver, and my receiver will be uh, tuned to the bandwidth, my bandwidth requirement. So this B n is the actual bandwidth of my uh, system where I have tuned it. Okay, uh, so so this is B n. So this is the total uh, noise, you know, which is going to enter the uh, system. There will be noise in the entire frequency spectrum, but uh, they will not enter the system. So this, but but whereas. Now, if my antenna is tuned for a particular bandwidth, then I can't an isolate noise and signal, right? So it, even the noise will, uh, if it is within that bandwidth, it is going to enter the system. So this is the input noise, right? Now, at the output, I have the signal uh, which gets amplified by a factor g. I have a noise also which is entering, which also gets amplified by g, right? And also uh, this amplifier itself is going to create an, uh, some noise, right? So there will be so many elements. Uh, resistors, capacitors, MOS transistors, each of them uh, will generate some kind of uh, noise. Okay, So, this is known as the noise amplifier, uh, noise of the amplifier. So, at the output, if you see here, so I define uh, the quality of this amplifier by a figure known as Fn. It is the uh, signal to noise ratio at the input to signal to noise ratio at the output. And obviously, from this equation, you can see uh, F will be uh, less than 1, right? Because uh, at the output, the, this noise, while the signal is getting amplified by G, noise is also getting amplified by G at the output, right? But N0 will be higher because uh, it will be uh, Ni plus the noise which is uh, added by the amplifier. So, so this is how, uh, so uh, that Na, okay, is, uh, should be as low as possible, right? And Fn and hence uh, defines the figure of merit of this amplifier. So, this is the uh, equation for uh, Fn. Now, uh, in this, if I uh, keep Si okay, uh, here and, and if I take this S0, N0 okay, at the output of the amplifier and, and I this is the uh, input noise, this Ni I substitute by this. So, S0, N0 uh, is the minimum signal to noise ratio available at the output of the first stage of this receiver right? Uh, and, and that is what I, am, I have to decide okay, what should be the minimum value okay? and that comes from the threshold voltage setting which I am going to do. Right. So, uh, in my uh, when I process this signal, I will set a threshold voltage and from that uh, threshold voltage, I will set an uh, S0, uh, the no, required S0 by N0 on a minimum. Right. Uh, any signal which is which is uh, uh, no, above this minimum, only I will process that signal further for a display on the scope. So, S0, N0 minimum is the uh, minimum uh, 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 threshold value which I am going to set so that it for for only signals above this uh, which is coming out of this amplifier will be processed for a uh, display on to the scope okay so and hence uh, this radar equation gets modified like this so this is known as the basic uh, radar range uh, equation okay so uh, this is an important uh, derivation and uh, this is the basic equation for radar range okay uh, now, uh, there is an, uh, another uh, thing which we need to uh, remember that the max range is also uh, dependent on PRF. Okay? Uh, PRF stands for pulse repetition frequency. Okay? That means, if I am uh, transmitting a pulse here, uh, the second uh, pulse is after a duration. right? So, that, that is known as the pulse uh, repetition frequency. So, this duration is known as PRT or the pulse repetition time period. Okay? So, 1 by PRF is PRT. So, this is. So, now suppose I am transmitting one pulse. Okay? So, it is going and hitting a target and coming back here. right? So, this distance is uh, T, okay? which I am going to compute. And from that T, I can compute the range. Okay? Range will be given by 2R divided by C. So, so the maximum range you know, I, which I can you know, detect okay? uh, given for a given PRF, okay, uh, will be R max is equal to C divided by 2 PR, uh, PRF, right? Because within this PR, uh, 1 by PRF, this pulse has to go and come back, right? So, so the R max will be, uh, so 2 R max, it, it has to travel 2 R max, 2 R max, okay, within a time of you know, uh, C divided by you know, uh, PRF, right? This is the velocity. 
this is the time so this is the distance and 2 r max is the total distance it can travel so the, the maximum r max will be given d uh, c divided by 2 r f okay now if the distance is more than that what happens is i am transmitting this pulse here okay it is going and it is coming here so if you see here this one and one for this i am getting here for this i am getting here as long as you uh, know it is uh, uh, meeting the that r is below c divided by 2 r f if r is above uh, this value then what happens is the ref the echo for this particular uh, can come here right in that case the radar doesn't know right whether you know, this is the you know, like like the electronics wouldn't know whether this is the reflected pulse for one or two right because i have transmitted again you now here and i have set the counter zero i will start a zero counting here and now i will receive this one okay this is actually the pulse coming from the uh, first uh, uh, pulse right? so continuously i am sending pulse so continuously i'll keep getting this pulse here so if you see here uh, here this is the actual distance is this much but then erroneously i will compute uh, this as my distance okay so so the prf will you know, uh, determine uh, what is the you know, uh, maximum range right obviously so when if you are um, uh, making uh, uh, r max here so you have to uh, ensure that uh, you are you know, uh, this you know, your prf is widely uh, spread so that this r this r max doesn't get restricted by this so you have to use an uh, you know, uh, low prf right to accommodate this r max Okay, so you have to use low PRF. So uh, there are uh, several types of uh, radars which use uh, various kinds of PRFs. So uh, low PRFs are uh, below three kilohertz. Okay, pulse repetition frequency uh, that we generally use for uh, 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 distance of less than fifty kilometers. Okay, uh, so uh, it is uh, it has got an ambiguity in the velocity. Okay, uh, when you compute. So we'll uh, see this when we uh, 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 see the. Uh, MTI radars and all. Okay, so how uh, PRF is important. Okay, all those issues. Okay, so let me uh, uh, just for to give a rough idea out here. I am just mentioning these things, but we will discuss these in details in the uh, no, uh, when we talk about MTI. Okay, so uh, now uh, medium PRF radars are which have uh, uh, PRFs between three to uh, thirty kilohertz, and uh, and and that uh, it ha it will have a uh, wider. Uh, 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 longer range. Obviously, if the distance between uh, uh, these two is uh, 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 large, then you will have uh, 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 a range uh, going high, right? So you have an uh, this is known as a uh, uh, medium uh, PRF, and then at a uh, uh, high, uh, uh, obviously the range will come down, right? Uh, here the frequency is going high, so time period is coming low, and hence the range is coming low. So uh, uh, now, if you see, uh, if you go uh, further high PRF. Then the range becomes low now, but because since you are uh, transmitting pulse at, at very close intervals, so uh, detection of velocity and uh, tracking becomes uh, easy. Okay, so uh, as of now, if we are only interested in a range, then I can use a low PRF. Okay, but if I am interested in velocity and tracking, in that case, I need to uh, increase PRF. So if I increase the PRF, obviously the range gets uh, 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 restricted. Okay. So that is the compromise which we have to do. So these things will be uh, clear when we uh, learn about pulse Doppler radar and tracking radar. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, uh, we'll uh, end today's uh, lecture out here, today's video out here, and in the next uh, uh, lecture, uh, uh, which I will publish, uh, in that I will uh, explain you about uh, CWN, uh, frequency modulated radars. Okay. Thanks a lot.